So a lot of you guys that are watching my channel here are thinking about making a move to the Seattle area. Some of you already have and I've helped you out, but a lot of you watching here are considering making that move over here. So in this video, I wanted to cover five different myths about living in the Seattle area that you may hear all the time, but really are not true. So I wanna dive deep into that on today's video. If you're new to the channel or just haven't subscribed already, feel free to subscribe to the channel here so you catch all my future videos on what it's like living over here in the Seattle metropolitan area. People just like yourself from YouTube reach out to me all the time here asking questions about moving over here and looking for help when they're making that move and looking to buy a home over here. I am an active real estate agent here, so if you are looking to make that move and purchase a home over here, more than happy to assist you through that process feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. But like I said, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about some common myths on what it's like to live here in the Seattle metropolitan area. So myth number one, and I've talked about this on many of my previous videos, but this is rain, the weather, that Seattle is the rainiest place that you can move. And if you move to the Seattle metro area, all you're gonna be doing is sitting in the rain all day long. So. That's actually not true at all. In terms of average rainfall, we fall like right in the median, the average point for the entire United States. We are not even in the top 20 for locations in, in total, you know, annual rainfall for the year. So it's, it's a myth that it rains here a ton when it comes to the actual volume of rain, the actual annual rainfall that you're getting. We're not even close to the top. A big reason for that is because we don't get torrential downpours all that often. We get a lot of misty and drizzly, you know, just a little bit of wet weather. It'll, it'll, you know, drizzle for a little bit in the morning and then clear up in the afternoon is very common. So what we do get here is more rainy days. Again, we're not even in the top five in the country in rainy days. Um, I believe we're just under the top 10. Um, so we'll, we'll get a decent amount of actual rainy days, but like I said, it's not torrential downpours. You're not walking outside and just getting soaking wet most of the time. Um, so it's really not that big of an issue when it comes to the actual rainfall. What you're gonna see more common here is more gray days, more overcast and cloudy type days. You're not gonna get as much sun as you would in California or Arizona or Nevada or some of these other places that people are moving from, Idaho, Utah, places like that, you are gonna get more gray overcast days here. You know, personally, I like it. It's a good trade-off of not having extreme temperatures like those other locations I mentioned. Um, but a little bit of rain, a decent amount of rainy days, not a ton in terms of annual percentage of rainfall, um, and, and some gray days, definitely a high percentage of those. Right, myth number two that I wanted to go over here are home prices, that Seattle is the most expensive place that you can move to. Now, there is truth to this, so this isn't complete myth. Seattle is an expensive place to live, there's no doubt about that. If you're coming from an Arizona, a Utah, an Idaho, uh, a Nevada, uh, some of these other places anywhere in the Midwest, we are gonna be absolutely more expensive than where you're coming from. If you're coming from California, New York, um, some of these other spots, maybe Massachusetts, we're not really going to be much more expensive than where you're coming from. We're likely going to be relatively comparable, if not cheaper. Again, the Seattle metro area has so many great suburbs outside of just the city of Seattle. In terms of median home price for the city of Seattle, we're talking the mid 800s, almost to 900 now at this point. Uh, this is February of 2022. You know, but we've got a ton of great outlying suburbs. You you can go to a place like the east side, which is going to have very comparable prices to San Francisco, where you're talking about 1.5 million in median home prices, which is going to be right there, like I said, in line with the San Francisco. You can go just south of that, uh, close to those east side cities, close to where all those jobs, those tech jobs are going to be. And you can go to a spot like a Maple Valley, where the median home price is 750000 right now. 
much cheaper than some of these other areas uh, that are focused on high tech, really high paying jobs, but you're still within a closer and commutable distance. There's plenty of areas around the Seattle metropolitan area that have median home prices anywhere from 500, 550 on the low end, and then all the way up from there. You've got plenty in those ranges under a million for those median home prices. So there are some fantastic places to live and you don't necessarily have to break the bank to do it. Again, when you're coming over here, if you're somebody that's not working remote, uh, you're coming over here and taking a job, there's a good chance that you, you may be coming over here for higher pay. So can weigh out those a little bit higher home prices, um, but you don't have to expect to pay 900,000, 1.1 million, 1.5 million just to live over here. Again, it's gonna depend what you're looking for, what's important to you. You can certainly pay those prices. A lot of people do. Um, but there are options cheaper than that here in the Seattle metropolitan area. All right, myth number three I wanna go over here is the homeless problem. So you may hear all the time the homeless issues that Seattle has. You may read the comments on some of my other videos where people that already live in the Seattle area comment about the homeless issue. Yes, Seattle, the city of Seattle has a homelessness problem. That's, that's for sure, that is not a myth. What I want you to be aware of though, is that this is not common throughout the entire metropolitan area or really even throughout the entire city of Seattle. There are some pockets of Seattle that do not have a homeless problem. Queen Anne is a great spot in Seattle where you're not gonna see it uh, as much of that. Um, there's, there's other pockets within Seattle where you're not gonna see nearly as much of that. The main issues when it comes to homelessness and where you're gonna see that tent cities, um, you know, people living out in the street, like I said, those are gonna be you know, in your downtown Seattle area. It's gonna be close to the freeways, places like that. You're definitely gonna see it. Um, it, it's it's going to be an issue if, if that's something that bothers you and you're looking to live in downtown Seattle um, or you're just, you know, you're, you're by the freeways all the time. You're definitely going to drive by it. Graffiti on the side of the freeway, tent cities everywhere. Like I said, trash laying around everywhere in the city of Seattle as you're driving by downtown. When you get outside of the city of Seattle, you're not going to see anywhere near as much of that. Some cities, you won't see it at all, especially in some of these east side cities, even where I live up north of Seattle, we don't see any of that. Um, we don't have any issues like that. So most areas outside of the city of Seattle, you are not going to have any kind of a homelessness issue whatsoever in those cities. You're not going to see it. You're not going to be dealing with it on a daily basis. Like I said, I live north of Seattle. The only time I see it is when I actually go into Seattle. Otherwise we don't, you know, uh, it doesn't affect us. We don't see it on a daily basis. So it's just important to know that when people say, hey, Seattle has a homelessness problem. Yes, it does, but it's just within the city of Seattle um, and certain pockets in the city of Seattle. So it's not something you're gonna be dealing with living in the metro area if you're living outside of the actual city of Seattle. Myth number four that I want to cover here is the Seattle freeze. So I don't know if you've heard this term before. The Seattle freeze refers to the fact that when you move over here, people in Seattle are not nearly as friendly. Um, they, they give you the cold shoulder. They're not going to talk to you out on the street if you're walking by, things like that. Again, there is some truth to this. It's again going to depend where you are. It's not going to be like living in the South where everybody's super friendly and whatnot. Um, Again, it's just gonna depend where you are. If you're in the city of Seattle, you're downtown, you're in the hustle and bustle, you may very well feel this a decent amount. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that's probably very realistic for you to feel. But again, if you're in the metro area, if you're in one of these suburbs, there are great people around here, very, very friendly people that will go out of the, their way to help you with things, to say hi, to give you a nice comment. There are plenty of nice people in this area. I've had people that have moved here from out of state that have contacted me here from YouTube and that have told me they felt the area was actually very, very friendly um, and the whole Seattle freeze thing was overrated and they've had a great experience here. So again, it's gonna depend specifically where you live, but the Seattle metro area as a whole, I would say, the whole Seattle freeze thing is a bit of a myth. Uh, there are plenty of friendly people in this area. You just might experience some of that 
within the city of Seattle, kind of in that more hustle and bustle type of area. All right, and the last myth, I wanna go over here, myth number five is that the Seattle food scene is lacking. I'm not sure why some people say this. This isn't like a huge thing, you don't hear it all the time, but I've definitely heard uh, people say this, whether on forums online or comments on videos, things like that. I couldn't disagree anymore. I mean, Seattle has such a di diverse food scene here. I mean, number one, you start with seafood uh, here in the Seattle area. It, it's hard to get seafood much better than anywhere you know, anywhere in the country here than in Seattle or any really coastal city, of course, because we have such great access. You're living in the Midwest or, you know, you're in Arizona or like I said, Nevada or Idaho or something, you're not getting seafood like this. There's some amazing places to eat when it comes to seafood. Mexican food, this is my favorite really type of place to go eat. I love Mexican food. There are some amazing places around here to get some great Mexican food. There's great Thai food all around, Chinese food. Um, you've got some Korean spots. Uh, you've got a bunch of great Italian spots. You've, of course, got your uh, American food and steakhouses, places like that. So there's really a wide variety of options here in the Seattle metro area for you know different types of food and some some amazing places to go eat. Along with that, you talk about like the drink scene and beverages and things like that. We have some great opportunities to go wine tasting if that's something you like in Woodenville. There's a ton of different wineries to go wine tasting there. Coffee, of course. Uh, Seattle's kind of the mecca, the hub of the coffee scene with Starbucks starting here, but outside of Starbucks, we have a ton of great local, you know, small uh, mom and pop type coffee places. And then beer as well. We have a ton of craft beer here. It's a big craft beer scene. So there's just so many options when it comes to food and drinks here in the Seattle metro area that anybody that says Seattle is lacking in that department, I would not take seriously at all. Not my opinion whatsoever. I think we've got a ton of great options for you here. If you're moving over here, you're a foodie, you like trying different places, I think you're gonna enjoy it here. All right, well, this wraps up my video on the top five myths of living in the Seattle metropolitan area. So, like I said, if you've got questions, you're moving over here, you're planning to buy a house in this area and you need some help through that process and making that transition, that move over here a little bit easier for you, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen, but I appreciate you watching this video.